Hello there, let's sew some Pokemon Sword and Shield ornaments. We're gonna start off with the starters and then move on to some fan favorites. Let's get to sewing. Starting off with, of course, Score Bunny. This starter that I personally chose, let me know in the comments which starter did you choose. So going into these Pokemon ornaments, I wasn't entirely sure what style I wanted to tackle it in. So I took my Pikachu ornament, one of my first ornaments, and sort of based the style off of that. When it comes to these ornaments, I have a few styles that I approach them in. Because I'm not the best at sewing and making very complicated, detail-filled ornaments is just really difficult, I try to simplify the designs as much as I can. For my Animal Crossing ornaments, I just stick to their heads and although that would have been a very easy solution for my Pokemon ornaments it seems like all of my Pokemon ornaments in the past have been full body ornaments and I wanted to stick to that style for these as well but I wasn't sure how to do it so like I said I took my previous Pikachu ornament and based it off of that really cute simplified chibi version I suppose basically they are just a head with a little round body and on the body I include whatever prominent detail that really makes that Pokemon that Pokemon. So for Pikachu, you didn't need the arms and legs. As long as it had the tails and the stripes in the back, it looked like Pikachu. So for Score Bunny, as tempted as I was to give it those really silly, long, lanky legs with those big feet, I decided to just simplify it and stick to the body, give it its cute little round tail and whatever whatever thing is around its neck. Everything was going great for this ornament. The ears turned out really cute. The face was adorable. And once I started to sew it together, I realized I forgot its little cheek poofs. So instead of undoing the whole seam around the body, I decided to just attach them to the sides and it turned out pretty cute, resulting in an adorable score bunny ornament. Moving on to Sobble, one of the most popular starters this generation. Again, starting off by just sketching our ornament, planning things out, I knew that Sobble had the biggest head and the smallest body of all three starters. So I exaggerated this chibi style even more so by making the head bigger and the body even smaller. But when it came to the color choices for this ornament, things got a little unfortunate because this isn't watercolor, this isn't a paint, this isn't any sort of art medium where you can mix things and make your own colors. I'm kind of stuck with whatever felt I can get my hands on. And I don't think it matters where you buy your felt, you're not going to get every shade of the rainbow ever. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is when working with felt. So when it came to my color choices for for blue, it was either the most toxically bright blue ever or something a little darker and a little more earthy, which unfortunately I ended up going with. It kind of dulls out the ornament and makes it kind of sad, even though he turned out really cute. I love his little dangly arms and I love the way I made his tail really big in the back. It just exaggerates how small and disproportionate this Pokemon is. If you're wondering why I didn't make his eyes really big and white and give him that doe-eyed look. When it comes to the style of these ornaments, I really like to embrace the fact that they are made with felt and I use buttons and with the Animal Crossing ornaments, I do like to make sure they look exactly like the characters, but with things like Pokemon, I think it's really fun to embrace these cute little button eyes. It might make Sobble look a little off, but I think it's cute and it still works. But other than that, he's a cutie. For our final starter, we have Grookey. Now, I am not a fan of monkey Pokemon or just monkeys in general. They're kind of weird. They kind of freak me out. They look a little too much like humans and just in general, I just don't find monkeys cute. Sorry, monkey lovers. But wow, did this ornament not turn out so stinking adorable. It is the best ornament out of this batch and it kind of makes me like Grookey a little bit. 
I had mentioned earlier that I wasn't going to include arms and legs in these ornament styles just because I wanted to keep that really simple chibi look, but I included Sobble's arms because I feel like his arms were just so iconic. Those weird little grabby hands. And then when it came to Grookey, he holds, he holds like a little stick and I just thought that was so him. And his little orange arms were something that really stood out in his design and I felt really bad not including them so I had this really good idea of giving them these little tiny arms that just stuck out of his body and he could hold onto a branch and oh my god did it not turn out so stinking cute. Of course I still included his little dangly tail that is also super adorable. His leaf hair with his stick in it is also super cute. I guess the more I look at this design the more I realize that it is pretty cute but I don't know. I I'm not into monkeys. And unfortunately, just like when I was sewing up Score Bunny, I forgot the ears. I, I keep forgetting to include things I want to sew into the design as I sew it closed. So unfortunately with this one, I did end up taking all of the stitching out because the ears were something that I wanted to be sewn into it. But after that, I sewed them up and holy cow, did this little guy turn out super adorable. I don't want to toot my own horn, but I was just kind of blown away at how cute this turned out. Moving on to some fan favorite Pokemon, we have Snom. This one was heavily requested on Twitter when I asked you guys what Pokemon you wanted to see me make into ornaments. And this little guy looked really perfect. He's simple, he's cute. And at first glance, I thought he was a solid mass until I looked into him further and I realized that he has like ice around his body. He's a little grubby guy with this sort of hedgehoggy ice around him. I thought it was solid, but no, it was see-through, which actually got me really excited about this ornament. My favorite thing to do with my felt ornaments is to not use felt. It's really fun to play around with a transparent effect and what I do is I simply use a, what is it? You know for school or work you have those three ring binders and you can put paper in them but you can also put these little plastic sheets to protect your paper. Well, I simply use those plastic sheets to make transparent stuff when I sew. I've only used these a couple of times in ornaments but they always turn out looking so cool. So what I did was cut out Snom's little grubby round body and then cut out the spiky ice transparent plastic piece and sew them together. It was really easy. I guess my only regret is I need to get some fishing line or something clear to sew the clear parts. It doesn't look bad with the white floss but it could look better with something clear. And yes I've tried glue but glue didn't really work. Either way, there's Snum. Our next most popular requested Pokemon was Applin. Well, to be honest, Appleton was more requested than Applin, but the simplicity of Applin's design was much more manageable for an ornament. I mean, Appleton's design isn't that complicated, but I think Applin just fit more for an ornament. Though I have to say I enjoy Flapple's name and design a lot more because it's a lot more stupid. But anyways, let's talk about the ornament. So overall the design for making this Pokemon into an ornament was very similar to the Pokemon itself. As in, I basically just made an apple ornament and then cut some holes in it and stuck some eyeballs and a tail out of it. Just like, just like the Pokemon itself. So in that sense, it was really easy to make this one and I knew when I looked up the design of this one because to be honest, I hadn't even seen one in game yet. In fact, I was just playing Pokemon last night and saw someone had it in battle and I was like, oh great, I can finally say I ran into this Pokemon. Look, I bought the game, went home to Tennessee for two weeks and barely played it. 
And that is playing video games as an adult these days. Very sad. I think overall this ornament was the easiest to make. It was just so simple. The apple was basically a circle. Even sewing the two different colors together was very easy. The little button eyes were perfect for his design as well. And I really enjoyed the two little hairs or whatever sticking off of his tail. A very simple detail that for whatever reason, brought me a lot of joy. And there he is, there's Applin. And for our sixth and final ornament, we have Wooloo, which is probably the most known Pokemon from this generation. I've seen it everywhere. I remember the internet going crazy for this Pokemon when it was announced, which made me kind of sad. Ampharos is my favorite Pokemon ever, and everyone just acted like Mary didn't exist. We already have a sheep Pokemon, we don't need another one. Also, Flaffy's cuter. There, I said it. Anyways, so this ornament, again, is another pretty simple one. It's basically just a ball of fluff with a few details cut out of the front of it. And of course, it's little tail in the back and two legs that dangle down. Honestly, I guess there's not a whole lot going on with this ornament. I think the most difficult part was trying to put all of those pieces around the head. You've got the dangly little pigtail things. You've got its ears, its eyes, its face. Everything had to sit perfectly still while I sewed it together and that was kind of difficult and kind of scary but aside from that if that's the hardest part of an ornament I think it was a pretty easy one except for the fact that I completely forgot to align the fluffy bits so the two main parts the two white I guess body pieces. When I cut the tail in the back and then put the face on the front, I didn't even think about matching up the the fluff lines. So things got a little unaligned, but you you can't tell, so it's fine. It turned out really cute. It looks just like Wooloo. And now I feel like I need to make a Mary ornament because Mary is better than Wooloo. Fight me in the comments. <laughs> And there are all six of our Pokemon Sword and Shield ornaments. They all turned out super cute. These were super fun to make. If you guys make any felt ornaments yourself, I would love to see them. Share them on Twitter and Instagram, tag me. They're a lot of fun to make and they even make great gifts. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Stay golden, bye.